Ford Motor Company has entered the EV space in a very big way with their reveal of the F-150 Lightning last night. We're going to jump into it today. My name is Paul Barron. This is Tech Path. Welcome back to the show. Of course, as you guys know, we cover a ton of EV technology and, of course, digital assets here, all sorts of things when it comes to technology. We cover it deep, and we want to dive in a little deeper on where Ford is going with their EV plan. Um, last night, they basically went out Bit of, did a big reveal. I ended up watching it on Twitter. Had one of our friends of the network actually was there, uh, was driving, and I, I was watching his his Twitter feed basically kind of from an aspect of seeing it up close and personal and really seeing what I think is a reveal for, I think this, is, first of all, this is a big win for the EV community in general, anybody that's uh, in favor of changing our entire environment and our transportation system, this is a huge step in the right direction. So it's going to, pro, uh, basically a Ford uh, truck is going to roll off the production line next year, 2022. There will be top three selling vehicles in America. When you look at this, it's the Ford F-150 has been on the top list for over 44 years. This is a massive move for Ford because this really goes after, I think, well, it does go after their biggest market share in terms of their overall sales. And for this being the case of entering in a price point, and I'll talk about that because there's some big variances here. When you look at a gas powered uh, pickup truck from Ford F-150, uh, coming in around $29,000. And that's on the base level Ford, you know, this is basically utility truck, very limited. Uh, the EV side of this for the Lightning on the F-150 is going to enter in at right at $39,000. Now, there are a lot of limitations on the $39,000 model, so don't get all, you know, jumping for joy just yet. The fact is, is that they've got this in a price point range that is very competitive with the gas vehicle. Now, the gas will still win out. I think they're still going to, by far, sell more gas trucks than they are EV trucks, but I do think they are going to make a big move. Here's the big question I have is whether or not this truck will replace the current hybrid, which price points out at about 41,000, almost 42,000 for the base model Ford F-150 hybrid, uh, which is like a 26 to 25 miles uh, per gallon, still having a, you know, a gas or ice engine uh, in comparison to the new uh, Ford Lightning. Uh, that's a big difference there. So I, my, Prediction here is they're probably going to get away from the hybrid and move strictly to EV and the ICE engine uh, going forward. All models of the Lightning will come with four-wheel drive, four-by-four, all-wheel drive. And, of course, that's kind of common with a lot of these vehicles that are coming out with these great high-torque electric motors. Amazing. Uh, I think this is going to be a big thing. Uh, and it will continue to kind of set the, ta the tail for where uh, pickup trucks are going to be going. The Super Cab is going to have a short 5.5 uh, foot bed and will be the only configuration the Lightning is going to be offered in. But fear not, because when you look at the Lightning, the front trunk is massive. I should say the frunk is massive in comparison. Now, I, I compare this to the Rivian and some of the extended storage in the Rivian. And I would say still the Rivian is going to win out in terms of overall storage capacity, even though we need to see all of those things in real life uh, use case. But the fact that that frunk is in a position to carry a fairly large load, both for the work vehicle, but what is more impressive to me when you have a pickup truck is the fact that you don't have a truck. And the fact that you don't have a trunk means you can't put things in out of the elements. And in many cases, it's one of the reasons I, I remember when owning pickup trucks, which I've had a couple in my time, is that that was why we would take a car, is on trips or things like that, that nature, being able to put luggage in, be able to secure it, those kind of things just never were able. Now this is not the case with uh, the pickup truck designs that are coming out in the EV models. Now, here's some of the issues. Ford has not released the battery pack size, which I think is going to have a big play on what their real life uh, estimate EPA range is going to be in terms of their uh, to total range for the battery. The other thing is that this is a lithium ion pouch style cell uh, with nickel, nickel, manganese, and the cobalt cathodes. Not a, not a super winner in terms, even though it is a great battery, uh, any of these, but the fact that this is not really going in the direction of you know, the more advanced battery architecture and technology, I think is going to be, this is just, a, it's a first entry for Ford. 
that's going to be interesting. The fact that the battery is going to be made in Michigan, that's another thing uh, which is going to be interesting there because you don't have kind of the supply chain problems that Ford's trying to get away from. And remember that essentially that's kind of what makes Ford and a lot of these ICE manufacturers who they are is supply chain management and supply chain just-in-time type manufacturing. That's a big aspect of where ICE vehicles kind of been, have been able to keep their cost, even though the cost of ICE vehicles are, in terms of profitability, are not as great as EVs. This is going to be an interesting thing. If this works for Ford and for the Ford pickup driver and pickup owner, this could be a revelation in electric vehicles because of the massive impact that Ford has on the American society, especially around trucks. And if it's successful, if we see, you know, even if we see double digit in, in essence of anything over 10 to 15% of their sales moving in this direction in the first, you know, say two years, if they perform over that, this is definitely something that I believe will shift a lot of what we're looking at in terms of adoption, moving quickly, much more quickly even than one Tesla could potentially in, you know, influence is because of the fact that this vehicle is by far the most loved and the most sold vehicle in America. So that's going to be a big factor if they are successful in getting the EV version, the Ford Lightning, uh, on the market and doing it at scale because they've got to be able to produce these at scale and they definitely have to be able to deliver. Just like the situation with the Ford Mach-E, even though I, I did see the sales numbers on the Mach-E the other day, it was over 6,000 units, which kind of surprised me. I was actually pleasantly surprised that they were over 6,000 units sold so far. And I used to think that it was going to take much longer to get a Mach-E. I've found out that you can actually get one a uh, much shorter, uh, much quicker, and in some cases, there's a few that are in stock at some of the Ford dealers. If you're willing to maybe you know wait a, a couple of weeks for a delivery or something of that nature, because it might be in the next state over. So that's a big factor, I think, in terms of extending the adoption rate. The standard EPA range on this is going to be 230 miles. The extended, which is what they're aiming for, is a 300 mile, you know, asterisk asterisk kind of scenario. Whether they hit the 300-mile range and compete, if they can get the 300-mile range in the base pickup truck or even in one that goes up around the price point of where the Rivian is at 70 k uh, then I think that is an excellent opportunity for Ford to really kind of make its way in the EV market. They are targeting a 426 horsepower, 318 kilowatt in the standard range model and a 563 horsepower, 420 kilowatt in the extended range, extended range uh, battery pack. So that's a big, uh, again, big advantage. If you saw the president and his um, little test drive with the Ford truck before they did the reveal, it actually was kind of a pre-reveal. You know, when that car took off, or excuse me, when that truck took off, I was impressed. I'm a Model Y owner. I know what that kind of acceleration feels like. That looked pretty impressive for a Ford to do that, so I was, uh, I was actually kind of uh, stoked on that. Remember, and I think a lot of you watching this channel understand, you know, even though we are Tesla fans, and I say you and myself, we are Tesla fans, maybe you're a Tesla owner, um, and the fact is, is that I want all of these companies to really make the transition, even if they're doing it in, in steps like what they're doing it with the Ford Mach-E and the Ford Lightning, this is a major, major move for the manufacturers. Uh, I think that we may have mis, maybe miscalculated with these manufacturers slightly. Now, can they make it and really come to a level that Tesla is, is doing currently in terms of production and the number of manufacturing? Remember one thing, these manufacturers are very innovative and they have the scale, they have the workforce, they have the ability to be able to do it. And number one thing they have is low cost of capital, which is going to give them an advantage of being able to accelerate and ramp up quickly to be able to do this. I did not anticipate the Lightning to be this quickly revealed and for it to be on the ground by 2022 to be questionable as to when in 2022 if it actually lands. Uh, now let's compare this to the Cybertruck and the Rivian, which I feel like are gonna be the three trucks that are going to make their way into the marketplace. Cybertruck, in terms of specs, again, these are specs of an unknown vehicle that we've yet to see in action 
in real test mode on the track with you know reporters and in a reveal type scenario of us seeing the model of the Cybertruck actually achieving the things and the targets that Elon has set for, the Cybertruck still is a hands down winner, both from a price point standpoint, performance standpoint, and obviously in, in the battery technology and, and really in the design. I mean, even though there are a lot of people that will still say Cybertruck is just too far out there in terms of edge uh, versus something that looks like a pickup truck that somebody's been accustomed to. Remember, for mass adoption, and I want you to think about this for a second. For mass adoption, there's a reason that Rivian went the way they did, the way they did in terms of design. Mass adoption is going to require the ability to be a lot softer in terms of design and a lot softer in terms of tech. I know that you and I are probably going, no way, man, we want edgy design, absolutely amped up tech. Sure, I would, you would, you're watching Tech Path. I'm the host of Tech Path, of course we would. But your average everyday pickup driver, my father-in-law, he would not go after a Cybertruck, but he would go after a Ford Lightning. That's one more person that is driving an electric vehicle. One more person that is no longer putting an ICE vehicle to work every year. That is a win. No matter how you look at it, it's a win, and it's only gonna make all of the things that are happening in some of these innovative companies, such as Tesla, Rivian, and the likes, go faster because good competition is gonna make all of these companies better and better and better. Back to this bad boy. For reference, an F-150 on the EcoBoost, the EcoBoost 3.5 liter V6, this is gonna basically be a 400 horsepower engine comparable to what you're getting over here on the 318 kilowatt at 426 horsepower. So this, this truck is definitely going to go head to head. I think performance wise, this may win out the performance truck people, the modders out there more so than the ICE vehicle. That in itself, if you get that and you are able to do the kind of modifications and things that I think we'll see, much like what we've seen in the Tesla community, Ford may have an absolute star on its hand. Now, let's talk about design for just a second. And I know you're probably looking at some video pictures of this thing right now. It looks kind of like the old Ford F-150. Ford is a bit more conservative in terms of their design. They probably could have edged it out a little bit further. I think they would have won a lot more hearts had they done that but they stayed consistent with what they are. And sometimes with a company like Ford, GM, and the likes, staying consistent with what's expected is important to a massive audience that's been buying from you maybe for decades, if, and if anything, maybe their first vehicle ever. And I have a lot of friends of mine, including my own brothers, they're Ford truck owners. They are Ford, they've probably never owned anything but a Ford. And those kinds of passionate fans are the ones that we're trying to get converted to EVs. And that is going to be the challenge, I think, moving forward. Now, how does this compare to the Tesla Cybertruck? I still think the Ford, if I were to give these a rating, comes in at probably a 7.5. Again, the Cybertruck, I would put at least a 9.5 because of what it's promising. A lot of promises there from Elon. Let's see them come through. If they come through, the Cybertruck, in my opinion, wins the uh, early adopter and the edgy crowd in terms, in terms of tech. Definitely gonna win all of the hipsters, the rappers, you name it, anybody that's looking for that edge. I will say this though, that design, when you look at where Tesla has gone in terms of design, because they've become kind of the vanilla box in the Model Y and the Model 3, I have found more and more people that are in the Model Y clubs trying to mod up their Model Ys and make them look different because you just, they're just, they're so look alike. And that is a little bit of a problem that you have when you don't have those variations in trim levels and things of that nature that Ford, GM, and all the other manufacturers have basically built their business on in terms of amping up, whether you're going from the XL, the XLT, the, you know, the Lariats, all these different vari variations that Ford has implemented to basically drive the price point up and give people something that's a little bit more unique. That's where I think we could have a bit of a, an Achilles heel is the trim levels on. Now I know everybody you know, that's driving a Tesla might say, well, the trim level is as high as you can go. 
yeah, maybe it is, but I could see some things that you could add in the Model Y or the Model 3 that would really amp that up. Also, some design elements that would be easy enough to do from a factory. And I understand, keep these things simple. You know, my friend Warren Redlick would say you need to be able to scale on manufacturing. I do get that to be able to grow to 20 million vehicles is what Tesla's you know goal is by 2030. I get all that but you have to win the hearts and minds of the automobile enthusiast. Now, the argument there is, are there going to be automobile enthusiasts in 10 years? Don't know, but I tell you this, the pickup truck would probably be the last vehicle that you, <laughs> that you will find on autopilot because these are vehicles that people drive in a completely different manner and use case is completely different as well. Now, if you compare this over to the Rivian, again, I'm gonna give the Rivian probably in the eight uh, 5 to 8.9. Again, Rivian's coming out early. Rivian has a bit of an edge here because they are the early mover. That's weird to say, but they're actually releasing that vehicle uh, next month. And for Rivian to be able to get that product on the market and us to be able to see it in use cases, I think Rivian's going to win big. The question for Rivian is can they keep up with scale and manufacturing demand? That's going to be the question. Of course, Cybertruck's kind of already in that case. You won't be able to touch a Cybertruck, I think, for years uh, after it actually comes into full-scale production. So, if you can't touch a Cybertruck and you want an EV, you may be really shopping at Rivian or Ford and maybe GM as they start to really ramp up their program to go into trucks. There are a few other players that are coming into this. You know, you've got the, the little kind of unusual vehicle there from Canoe. There's a couple other utility vehicles that kind of move in this direction. But I think Ford right now has made an early move. It's a dominant one. And I think Ford may end up leading out again in terms of the pickup sales. All right, we're gonna continue to cover more breakdowns of these EVs from time to time. And a lot of this new tech that's moving in, uh, basically the electric vehicle uh, technology arena, everything from battery tech, autonomy, and some of the innovations that I think we're gonna see are coming very fast. And I think a lot of you are, are, are still expecting so much coming in from Tesla, but I think there's a lot of other companies that are actually starting to actually catch up. And this could be very interesting in terms of a play out in the next few years. So if you're listening in over the podcast, make sure and like, the podcast, give us a few stars over there and subscribe. If you're watching us here on YouTube right now, if you like this video, like it, just hit, a, hit the like button. And of course, subscribe. That's the best way you can help us, one, to grow the channel, but best of all is to continue our deep dive research and our deep dive analysis, analysis on where technology is moving society. If you have an idea for a show, shoot us an email to producer at revernetworks.com. And then of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.